Hello, welcome back and a very, very happy new year, 2017. And I uh, wanted to do a sort of little video today um, on preparing my new insert for January 2017. Um, many people have asked me to do this and I, I've never really done it. And it's sort of going to be experimental because I think I'm going to play with the first time um, speeding up and talking over a video. So fingers crossed, I'm not sure that's going, how that's going to go and I don't even know how to do it. But the only way to do it is to find out how to do it. And uh, so please bear with me and be patient. And I hope you enjoy this little, this little video and it maybe, maybe it will give you some ideas as to the fun that you can have in your journal. And believe it or not, this year I have um, the desire to really simplify things. Um, I, I just, for an artist, I, I actually got a little overwhelmed with all my planner stuff and realized that I was probably spending a bit too much time in my planner and not enough time creating art uh, on canvas or watercolor paper or, or board um, that people could purchase. And um, also I, I was just getting overwhelmed. And so I have canceled all my subscriptions um, I had uh, Coca Daisy and um, Studio Calico, and then, and then I had um, a, a, a pen one, the iPen box, and, and various other things. So I, I have cancelled all of those because um, I've just got too much stuff and um, really want to take it down to journaling a little more simply. Um, and uh, yeah. So there we go. Um, so the first decision is to decide what insert to use. Now, as some of you may know, I do have an Etsy shop and I do sell inserts. And um, I have lots and lots of choose from. These are, these are just four that I picked out um, you know, that I, I might want to start the new year off with. They are 80 page inserts and they're absolutely beautiful. Um, I really created them for, for me um, because I love the Tomo River paper. This is the 52 gram uh, Tomo River paper and I'm an artist so to use my images on the front instead of having to stick them on the front or, or whatever. And they're also hand sewn. Often the stitching matches the, the color of, of, of the artwork on the front. You can see this one is sort of a turquoise um, color. Um, and uh, the stitching is turquoise. And this one is pink, the stitching is pink. This one is more of a beigey color and the stitching is beige. And this one also is a neutral color and the stitching is, is beige. So <laughs> the, first, the first big question is, you know, which insert am I going to, chart as, uh, to use for the new year? And I think I'm gonna pick this one. Um, so these will go off for another month or whatever. And actually, I get through an 80-page insert in, in about two weeks. So I use about two, two a month. Um, but I do, I do write quite a lot. So um, I always like to leave the, the first page uh, blank or just put uh, a little something uh, down the front there, which I'll do with you in a minute. And I've got all sorts of things here for fun. Um, I have washi tape, I have the Distress Ink, uh, the Tim Holtz Distress Ink, I have some stencils, I have some um, stamps, uh, I have more stamps on my left, 
uh, which you'll see in a minute, cling stamps to give me lots of choice. And I'm also going to put down a sheet here. This is one of those um, work worksheets that things don't really stick to, just to protect the desk from from the ink. And um, and then let's get going. I've also got some um, watercolor paints and some neo color neo color two water soluble crayons, which are great for backgrounds. Um, I've just done a new little tiny palette to have with me and this is specifically for doing backgrounds and it's very very neutral along with an iridescent bronze and an iridescent gold because I, I love to put that um, in, my, in my books and um, I'll probably do a separate, a separate um, video on that um, so that's, uh, that's very useful. So. Let's get started! So it's a good idea if you have things ready uh, before you start or you can, you know, potter about and, and get things as is your wish. Um, a tape runner or it is a really good idea and that's how I usually um, put my stuff into the journal. Glue is a bit dicey because the glue can have um, the glue can have problems. Uh, it can make your pages wrinkle, and um, it, it's just not a good idea. Um, so I have a professional tape runner because I I sell greeting cards professionally, but. Just an ordinary little tape runner like um, some glue dots or a little tape runner is absolutely fine. Or even a glue stick, a glue stick, but uh, wet glue I, I don't really, I don't really recommend. And then I'm sort of going for a, a natural sort of vintage feel uh, for this month. So this is one of my fine art prints. That's just going, to, I'm going to pop in here. Just to, just to make that beautiful. That's one of my original tree paintings and it's got uh, the Japanese uh, writing on, which I love. Japanese writing fascinates me. It's an art form in itself. And as I'm going for this kind of coloring, I'm also going to put another one of my fine art prints inside the back cover. And just pop that in there. Pop that a little towards the bottom. That's one of my girls. I do um I do dashboards using the um, fine art prints in different sizes, so that's, that's quite fun. So that's how I'm going to start. And then, another resource that I love to use are magazines. And this is the Artist Cafe, um, and it's by... Um, Stampington and Company. I think it only comes out four times a year. Um, but it has wonderful images in it that you can use. That's Frida. Um, and I, I love the colors. And I love to um, tear these out because it gives an interest, interesting edge. So always check. If you find an image you like, always check on the other side of the page to find out there isn't one you like more on that side of the page. So I'm going to use this image here because I love the colors on it. Those are the sort of colors I'm looking for. And I am going to just tear this down so I can 
fit it in my journal because it's going to look really, really nice. And you can see that um, if you tear towards you, you get this nice uh, rough edge. If you tear it um, the other way, it's, you get a different finish. So I'm tearing this towards because I want this rough edge. Here's, a, here's another really, really nice image too. And um, although I may prefer this one because this one is almost, yes, I'm, well, I don't know, I need to prefer the actual image there. Yes, I think, I think I prefer this image. So I'm going to tear this one out too. And I'm going to tear it first and then do more accurate tearing. So I'm tearing the opposite direction there, so the stuff. Do you see when I tore in that direction? The, the thing goes on the other side, so you've got to tear towards you as opposed to away from you, if that makes sense. So there are two images there, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get my distressing age them a little bit more. These are the Distress Ink tins and they're really useful. And this little pouncer here, this little piece of equipment, they let you keep your sponges for this right on the bottom of the ink. They just pop in there to store, to store your sponges. So this is Distress Ink in Vintage Photo. And I am going to just go around the edges here where I tore it to give it a bit more of an effect. And make it a little vintage, because I like that look. And you can even lift this up and really, right, go on, literally on the edges of here. It gives a really, really nice effect. And of course you can actually go on the piece itself if you want to just distress that a bit as well. So that's that's really nice. And then I'm probably going to do a little bit more on the edges with a colour called that I love called black soot. Black soot. Hope you can see that. And I'm going to go right over the edges of that with the black soot a little bit, a little bit over there. It just gives a Nice effect. Let's see if we get those edges with the black soot. This one too. This is a 
you know, using magazines is a really easy and nice way to pop things in your journal, um, especially if you believe that you can't draw or you're not an artist. Um, I would disagree with you. I think we're all artists and we can all create art. It's just a matter of practice, you know. You wouldn't expect to be a concert pianist overnight. You have to practice. And it's the same with your art and drawing. It's just, you know, the more you do, the better you'll get. And you know, there's tons of stuff on um, YouTube um, that allows you to um, practice and see what people do. And uh, they have lots of lessons there, so if you can't get the lessons in your neighborhood you can use YouTube and um, you know it's uh, it's uh, so available you can get books I know a lot of people have um, Jane Davenport beautiful faces book which is fabulous um, I love her work but she also does online courses um, I've done quite a few of them myself and um, they're just, they're just fabulous. She's, um, she's so fun and she's such an inspiration. So I highly recommend her, um, her courses. So it's a question of, do, do you want to take this down or do you want to put some washi tape over so that you can write underneath? Um, you can also cut out a piece of white cardstock or paper and put it on the back here so you can journal on the back and you can also if you have a photograph for instance you could mount uh, this is obviously not the right kind of um, this is just a sticker of mine it's not a photograph but just to give you an idea you could mount a photograph on the front here and on the back um, and do it as a tip-in a lot of people ask what tippins are, and they are just something that you put in your journal. Um, it's uh, something that you add to your journal, and it gives you an extra surface, or you can add theater tickets, or you know, anything that has to do with your life. And Traveler's Notebooks were originally designed uh, for travelers. And the size has got to do with um, being able to actually put brochures in. It's the perfect size for most brochures. They fit right, right in your traveler's notebook. And that's what they were designed for. Traveling and, uh, you know, popping in your, your, your brochure and your, your, your goodies from travel so that you would have a record of um, all your travels so you know that's a, a nice effect and actually what would make it nicer in my opinion is to do a little more distress here of the corner of the pages. This is something I like to do a lot. And it's sort of a... You just pat the ink and then you... You sort of... It's a pat, 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 pat motion. And then you've got the whole page distressed. And then you can... You can actually write over this with ink, which you've got a really nice distress page here. Fun. So, this one, this one's a little wide, so I'm going to have to tear a bit more down this side. And 
I'm going to put that one in a little later. So I'll put that in my pile because I want to show you different things as opposed to the same thing. So it's not going to be coherently decorated. I'm just here to give you ideas. Oh, and before I put that away, let's go on to another, another thing that I like to use. And that is stencils. So I've got a stencil here that these are six inch stencils and I can't remember where I got them from. Um, I have so many in so um, in the comments I'm thrilled to help with any questions but if you ask me where I got the stencils from I'm probably not going to remember. Um, so, um, like I said, I got, I got them from so many different places over a period of, of time, so I, I wouldn't be able to remember where I got them from. But there are so many that, you know, there's so many available, you can find them on Amazon. And so all you're going to do is hold your stencil down. And you're going to get these inks again. I, I use these these ink pads all the time uh, for my journals. I think they're absolutely wonderful, and um, they give such nice effects. Um, and they're very easy to control. Um, I don't. I'm not so. The stains are okay, but they're messy and they're wet, very wet, and. You, it's not so subtle. They're very, very strong, most of the stains. Um, and, and this is just, you know, I like a more subtle look. Um, so this is, this is, this is, this is the best for that. So you're just going to go over where you see the openings. And then when you're done, you're just going to lift up. Voila! And, and see how, how beautiful that is. I'm just going to let that dry a moment. I haven't actually... Oops! On the floor! On the floor upside down! Ink on the floor. I got it. Um, I haven't actually got my heat gun here at the table. But obviously if you were doing something that was very wet, you would need your heat gun. And I didn't bring it over. I thought I had everything, but I do. Um, so for the moment, I'll just put a piece of paper in between there so it doesn't smudge over it onto the other page, because you don't want that. Because we'll move on to another page. So this is what I do. I, I just, I randomly go through the insert and pick out a page uh, while I'm doing one one thing so to speak um, and and also you do you, you do have to um, wash your hands uh, now and then because you get ink on them and then you're likely to smudge it on your pages which isn't you know which isn't great so here now, I could be doing these in bright colors, and I have lots of bright colors in the ink pads. I have greens and pinks and things like that. But I want this insert to be very subtle and more vintage. So I am going to stick with my sort of neutral uh, vintage colors as opposed to that. That was walnut stain. And now I'm going to go to Frayed, Frayed, uh, do I want to go to Frayed Burlap, Brushed Corduroy. Mm, yeah, I think I'm going to go to, uh, no, I'm going to go to Gathered Twigs. That's what I want, Gathered Twigs. What lovely names these have, Gathered Twigs. Obviously, I'm probably going to have to do two videos of this because I'm not very fast. And it's going to take a long time. So this is 
just a really easy, simple way to get lovely, lovely, lovely things on to the page. Very subtle. There's three hearts here. And I like the love. I'm going to do the love in the post. And a little bit of this postmark. Not all of it. You don't necessarily want to do the whole stamp. But it's nice to just do bits of it. So, there you see. Just a bit of it. Very subtle. And, you know, some of these things you can always outline with a black pen as well which can be fun now i am going to go and wash my hands this is another this is a, a metal stencil that does a really nice effect same exactly the same way of a tree on your page so and you'll see over here oh no i didn't that's just a piece of dust but I got a bit of a smudge over there, and so I'll either put some washi tape over there, or a sticker, or um, I'll watercolour over it a bit, um, a bit of a background. Um, do be careful though with the with the um, distress inks because they are water soluble, and therefore if you watercolour over them, they're all going to smudge. So best um, not to watercolor over them. You can do it, uh, you know, with above them or below them or whatever. But don't uh, watercolor over the top because they're likely to smudge. And I'm going to take a break so I can go and wash my hands. So I'm back. I washed my hands. Now I just wanted to show you another quick tip and then I'm going to have to go because this video is getting too long and do another one. Um, and that is to use deli paper. You can get this deli paper from um, Costco, a big box of it. Uh, it's very inexpensive and it's lovely paper and that is another thing I use to when I'm decorating to put between my pages so that they don't stick together or they you don't get transfer of, of color and ink etc from one page to another so that's deli paper deli paper um, so that makes a great a great addition to decorating your books and just quickly uh before uh we go on to the next video um I'm talking about doing backgrounds here um, and in, in these, these pouches in my girls that are available, I have all my pencils. And these pencils are called Derwent in Ink Tents and they're just absolutely wonderful um, and great for easily doing backgrounds, very portable. Um, so I'm just going to show you quickly um, how fun these can be. And so we have a nice, a nice a brown color here and you can just, you know, just do some strokes, praying, hatching, whatever you want here. And they just look, when you put them on like that, they just look like crayons. Nothing too, nothing too revelationary. This is a darker color. We'll put some darker color there. Let's see what else we've got. So you can just layer it some color different you know the, the harder you press the stronger it's going to be and this is a blue oh that's a black so you can just lay down some color with your intense crayons there put this away 
all his, all his bags I had on my desk that you saw at the beginning of the video have all got different, different crates in them. Um, I did have them in bins standing up, out, but um, in a Razcock cart from Ikea. But I just, um, they're very easy to damage and, um, you know, they get, they get dusty on them all the time and it just looks messy. So I decided to uh, put them all in my pouches and um, in a cupboard so they're easy to grab when I want them. And uh, they're protected and uh, they don't get dusty. So these are the Neo Color 2. Um, these are the water soluble ones and those are the ones you probably want. They do do another type Neo Color 1 that are not water soluble. So I'm just laying down some of those and this is just to show you how you can do really quick, fun backgrounds. Very easy, no artistic. Huge merit needed, and then all you do is you get your watercolor brush and blend. And you'll see from this that um, you know the intense, and, and that's one of the reasons they're called intense, is because the color that comes from them is is really is really intense for a crayon um, you know it, it's it's pretty unusual so and also the neon color so they all blend and you know before you know it you have a nice little creation here um, of a page And then you can go in with some kitchen paper and lift some of it off if you want to for a more more subtle look. And what I like to do is something I use a lot is uh, go in with some iridescent um, color on top of that. So some iridescent gold just in a couple of places just to give it a little a little oomph, a little transparency and fun. So another page that's just and and you can write um, over that with your fountain pen and I don't know if you can see the gold iridescent but um, that's just a nice nice subtle page or of course you could um, stick a photograph in there and, and then it's got a nice back background and uh, you know around the photograph you can draw some of uh, black black lines anyway i've gone on way too long and um i have lots of other ideas to share with you and so if you would uh, allow me i will come back and do a little more on decorating my insert if that is something that would interest you um, if it is give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments that you would like to see more. This is the first time I've sort of done a art process decorating your insert video. So do let me know if this is the sort of thing that you would like to see. And if it is, I will do more. So very, very happy new year. The healthiest, wishing you the healthiest and happiest of 2017. Uh, let's hope it's a fabulous year and uh, thank you so much for watching. Ciao, ciao!